an unexpectedly active day, uh, active evening, evening uh, with this uh, slow-moving cold front you can see here on the satellite, the thunderstorms that popped up uh, this evening and affected a large, a lot. I thought they were mainly going to stay to the west, but uh, that's what the models were showing yesterday. And then uh, as we got into the day, they were starting to be a little more uh, uh, aggressive with this. And we'll put the lightning on just to show you how all the lightning here that these uh, storms produce. And you can see um, it really looks like over central Jersey there, right in this area right there. Looks like Middlesex County um, into northern Jersey there. It looks like it really uh, went off quite a bit. Um, and this is all uh, due to a cold front uh, that is slowly moving through. You can see it right here. The number of lows along it. It's going to be a slow-moving front. Uh, but we did wind up getting some rain today. Uh, and uh, some thunderstorm out, uh, out of it. So I think that's pretty good. If we uh, look at, uh, uh, so I, this is what I got in Rockville Center tonight. You can see we got uh, some lightning there. That's a positive, looks like a positive, uh, a positive lightning strike there. Um, you can see it really got dark. I mean, this is like 7.15 and the street lights were coming on. Uh, so this was a pretty dark, no shelf cloud for us. Some other areas got a shelf. Uh, we didn't get it, uh, but uh, these were uh, there were severe uh, warnings out for some of these storms. So I'm going to first go over these uh, storm reports and the rainfall reports uh, first. So we Connecticut hit was hit very hard. Uh, Central Connecticut looks like trees down, flash flooding in uh, Middlebury, uh, and in Newark Airport had a wind gust of 61 miles an hour with that storm this evening, 6:35. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, thunderstorm wind damage in Secaucus. Down wires on NJ3. So utility weather outage is, of course, Brooklyn. 5,000 without power. So it looks like Brooklyn was hit very hard. Fire near Kenilworth Boulevard at Kenilworth, Kenilworth from a lightning strike. Uh, East Newark train spotter reported at water rescue uh, in Kearney. Um, lightning at um, Marine Park. A lightning strike caused a traffic light to catch fire in Brooklyn. Flash flooding in East Newark. Lightning striking at Newark Airport. The tail of a park plane. And a flash flood in southwest Jamaica. Intersection closed due to flooding. These storms were slow moving. This is what the radar looks like right now. Um, but because they were slow moving, they gave us a lot of rain, which we actually needed. Uh, just not in such a short amount of time. Obviously, these are the rainfall amounts that we have so far. Looks like Fairfield County got uh, between 1 and 2 inches. But look at some of these New Haven County, northern New Haven County, Middlebury, 4.67 inches. Nagatuck, 3.35 inches. Um, in Orange County, Valesgate, 1.30 inches of rain. Um, and in L Queens County, Long Island City got 1.21. Westchester, we see amounts over an inch as well. <clears throat> I'll have to go through some of the ra <coughs> rainfall amounts. Uh, from this, uh, but I want to rewind the radar, and uh, we're going to go and look at um, what we got going on here. So uh, this is what happened: five, six o'clock. You can see what happened here: six o'clock, seven o'clock. You can see we had a Boeing line, and so I made that post, and I tried to get a short, uh, a short video out because we have this Boeing line here. This was around six fifty, uh, and where that bow is, right around Brooklyn, uh, that's where there's some pretty strong wind gusts. Um, and you can see here, and then it kind of just, it kind of got a little bit bigger. Uh, the wind wasn't so much of an issue, but the rainfall was. These storms weren't really moving that fast. They were at 740 still in Nassau County. Uh, so they were able to dump a good amount of rain. They made it into, looks like, western Suffolk. Um, and then they started weakening into uh, just a uh, area of shower activity. But it looks like everybody, at least the whole island, got some rainfall out of this, which was needed. Though some areas, again, got way, way too much uh, rainfall. Uh, let's go to the Con Edison power outage map. I kind of already went over uh, uh, I went over uh, PSG Long Island. Uh, we'll take a look and see uh, those outages in Brooklyn. Um, there are some pretty big outages. It looks like they were able to. Yeah, here we go. There's a pretty big outage right here. Uh, that's, a, that's a 907 customer outage right there. Um, so it looks like Con Edison definitely had some issues with light, uh, uh, trees into wires and stuff. Uh, we got a PSG Long Island. I already looked at JCPNL. The numbers weren't too bad over there. We have 919 customers without power across Long Island. Um, 
So we'll do the PSEG, and you know, we'll just go to poweroutage.us and make things easier uh, and see what uh, we have in New Jersey here. Hardest hit counties. Uh, um, I'm surprised Middlesex doesn't have that many outages considering those wins. Um, but, uh, yeah, really uh, pretty uh, impressive storm, uh, for sure, to say the least. Um, let's just let's take a look at a Coney Island webcam, Coney Island Earth cam. I'll run this because we didn't get a shelf, but there was a shelf cloud uh, viewable from other areas. So if we go over here, um, put this to here, you'll see that shelf cloud right there. There it is. Pretty ominous looking. Uh, so uh, that was the storm uh, from Coney Island. And they, yeah, you can see the shelf right there. Real nice shelf cloud. We didn't get that, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see the green behind that storm. So, you know, it was pretty impressive. Um, and I don't think they were calling for any severe thunderstorms today. I was looking at it. And here's what a, the storm looked like at Coney Island. Um, but they weren't calling for it, that's for sure. Um, but it just goes to show you. And I should have. I was thinking of doing a video last night, and I'm like, eh, I should have. But uh, what are the cases? This this is the video for this week. So uh, right now uh, the temperatures have dropped because of the rain, obviously. 75 at Islip, 73 at Farmingdale. Unfortunately, my alley is still uh, yeah the alley is still uh, 79 degrees. Yeah, 79 degrees in the alley. Oh, I hate this place. It's hotter than almost everywhere else right now on this map. So, um, um, so uh, yeah, um, temperatures have dropped into the 70s. Let's we'll take a look and see what the rainfall uh, was for today. Well, you know, we could just put six-hour rainfall, show you the rainfall amounts that we've got. It looks like Nassau County got about a half an inch. It looks like half an inch. Um, heading to Queens and Brooklyn, probably a little bit more. Yeah, some of these amounts are a little higher. An inch, three quarters of an inch, um, and as you head into Suffolk, definitely less. Uh, looks like Ice Slip got only 0 0.11, so you're not a whole lot of rain out here. 0.22 in Ridge, it's something. We'll take it. Um, uh, but some areas again got inundated. If we go up to Can uh, Connecticut and Westchester, you see those inch plus amounts there, and then Central Connecticut. Some of these, uh, we go into further northern New Haven County. Uh, some of those areas that were hit hard. Um, those numbers aren't coming up on here, which is kind of unusual, but maybe because we're at 6 hour, I'll make it the 12 hour. Um, you can see some higher amounts upstate, and then look at New Jersey, uh, and you can see where the heavier amounts were in the central part of the state there. Uh, and let's see how Ocean County did also respectable 0.47 inches in Tom's River. So it looks like uh, everybody get in on, got in on some rainfall today. Uh, and some areas, again, got way too much at once, of course. Um, so that's uh, definitely definitely uh, not good, obviously. Uh, we'll go over the highs today. It wasn't as hot as I was worried about. The past couple of days, for some reason, Long Island, we had a decent sea breeze. So mid-80s pretty much for much longer. Mid to upper 80s, except on the North Shore where it got close to 90. Maybe my area had upper 80s. Um, uh, LaGuardia hit 90, but JFK only got to 84. Central Park got up to 88. So no heat wave uh, being reported there. And you can see the 90s mostly. Hudson Valley through Jersey um, for the most part. Um, I want to go to Wonder Map. We're going to go and look at some precipitation amounts here. So I'll get some more precipitation numbers here for Long Island. Uh, so you can see that, again, some areas got... I mean, decent amount. Nassau got a half to three quarters of an inch of rain. Some areas got a little bit more. Um, so everybody got in on the rainfall. Everybody got in on some rainfall today, um, which is good. So it's good to see we needed the rain, although, again, some areas got way too much. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad that we finally at least got some. You don't want to have to pull out the drought monitor. I was almost going to have to pull it out. Uh, the next thing that we got to watch is Tropical Storm Erin. Uh, right now, it's not that well organized, it's, uh, but it is forecast to become a hurricane. So uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, max sustained winds of 50 miles an hour moving west at 16. Minimum central pressure, 1002 millibars, 29.59 inches. Um, and uh, it is going, there will be gradually strengthening. So uh, 
We're going to have to look at that on the uh, satellite imagery as well. So uh, we'll go back to the satellite imagery. Uh, again, that's our front. We'll go to the CONUS view here. Not going to see Erin on this. I have to go to the tropical floaters. Um, you can see there's your slow-moving front there. And hopefully we can get it there. It might be a little bit of smoke behind this front eventually, but I'm hoping we'll have some sunny weather as we cut to Friday. But let's go look at uh, Erin. Yeah, it's very small looking. Oh, but you know, actually, it is. It is getting well organized. I should say it is. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, that is getting well organized. You can see definitely. It's strengthening. It's got plenty of warm water to work with too. Uh, uh, as you know, the sea surface temperatures are high, and we'll talk a lot more about Erin on Sunday. Um, so uh, let's go into that storm prediction center and see if they have anything for us tomorrow because we're still in a thunderstorm risk. Um, no, nothing, but again, I don't think they had anything for us today, I think, uh, at least when I checked, so I'm, I, I, they really should have, uh, but anyway, uh, let's take a look at the weather through the weekend here, uh, and you will see here that, uh, we'll go to the uh, European here, the 12Z European run, uh, and you'll see here uh, that there's, but the, we should have that high pressure building on Friday, though there could be inland some isolated showers and thunderstorms because of the easterly flow uh running up into some of the higher elevations uh so, so but here on long island i think we'll be okay now here's erin and this is the 12z run you can see it's pushed kind of west uh and this is a pretty powerful storm so i'll have to look at it look at it again but this is a pretty powerful looking storm right here um and uh that comes close to us this is what the european did on the 12z run uh, just for comparison, we look at the G the GFS. GFS keeps it further away, uh, but uh, it definitely still has to be watched. We're not out of the woods yet. And again, I'm going to talk more about Aaron on Friday um, for sure. So let's go to the, I'm not Friday, uh, Sunday. You see why I can't do these? <laughs> this place is just messing my brain up. It really is. Uh, now, it does not look like the activity is widespread for tomorrow. Uh, it looks more scattered in nature. Here's Friday, and again, you can see well inland there could be uh, some shower and thunderstorm activity, but generally not so much for us. Uh, dew points and wind flow. Again, staying in the humid air for uh, to overnight and to tomorrow. Still have those dew points, um, but the drier air does try to come in, especially by later in the day a little bit. You start seeing it try to sink in, but this front is going to, again, kind of get washed out off to the south, so unfortunately the really dry air is going to be stuck in New England, we're not really going to see uh, moderate relief from the humidity. You can sort of see this front just kind of hung up over here uh, off to the south as usual. Because, again, without that high just sitting to the north, this, this has been many times we don't have normal cold fronts anymore. Um, uh, temperatures uh, as we go into uh, tomorrow. It probably, again, I don't think it's going to hit 90 here. Um, maybe inland, uh, be in the 80s. It's just going to be muggy and then turning drier later on in the day. And then for uh, Friday, it'll still be quite warm, mid to upper 80s probably, uh, but a little bit less humid, though. Again, the best weather is going to be well to the north. I wish I could be in New England. That's where it would really be nice. Like, Maine, that would be really nice. Um, and then going beyond that, look at the European here. Let's see what the European has with the uh, front. Yeah, it's kind of just... So we get into the little boundary of it there, a little bit of the drier air, but uh, we deal with moderate levels of humidity during the week, nothing cra the weekend, nothing crazy. Um, we do deal with moderate levels of humidity uh, and, s and increasing temperatures. So again, as we go through looking at Saturday and Sunday, uh, we'll have temperatures again at well into the 80s. Though again, Long Island tends to be cooler um, and inland tends to be hotter, especially on Sunday it looks like. Inland, especially New Jersey, probably 90 or better. The city, 90 or better. But hopefully Long Island can avoid it. Uh, cloud cover. All right, we'll go to that. I have the zeros the end, but uh, it's not enough of it. Let's go to the cloud cover map. So obviously tomorrow we're going to have some cloud, co plenty of cloud cover, maybe some breaks, but plenty of cloud cover. And then Friday, hopefully, we can have mostly sunny conditions. So there may be a scattered cloud or two around. Um and then Saturday, it looks like there should be plenty of sunshine this weekend. So um, that's what it's looking like right now. Um, I don't really see any anything to really be too concerned about. I'm just going to go to the NAM. 
uh, model and look at the cloud cover for Friday. Also tends to clear that cloud cover out. But tomorrow, though, we'll have a decent amount of cloud cover, I think, more than today. Um, and let's uh, look at the, see what this is going to do with the front. See if we have any more activity for tomorrow. Yeah, not really. So it seems like most of it came through tonight instead of originally. It was, we th I thought tomorrow was going to be the more active day, but it looks like most of it has come through tonight. Um, I'm just going to go to the uh, HRRR, a look at CAPE levels here. See what we got. There is still some CAPE tomorrow, so there could still be a chance of a shower thunderstorm. You know what? There's one more model I can look at. So we don't normally look at, but we'll, this is the one I should have looked at already. Because this one, this one tends to be right sometimes when the others aren't. So, um, let's see. It does develop some stuff tomorrow, but it's mainly over Jersey. So it looks like best chances for a thunderstorm would be over Jersey, but I can't rule it out. Um, but as we get into Friday, we should be with that. So, uh, last, we'll just go ahead and look at the smoke model. Uh, and I'll just run the 18Z HRRR, vertically integrated smoke. And it really doesn't look like it's going to be all that bad. It's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Here's some thicker stuff. Uh, I don't think it comes to us. No, I don't think we'll be dealing with too much of that. So that's some good news, at least. We've had decent air quality. If we go look at the AQI, well, after the rain, we're definitely going to have good air quality. So uh, I think the air quality won't be an issue uh, for the next, like, three or four days, hopefully. Um, so uh, last but not least, we're going to go to windy.com and just take a look at um, what this has for um, uh, Aaron. So just for, well, let's see, we're going to go with the... So this is uh, Hurricane Aaron at this point. I'm going to put this on so you can see uh, that we definitely have some effects if it came this close. It would just miss us, but it definitely would cause a lot of beach erosion and stuff. It would be a pretty powerful hurricane offshore. If you go and look at wind gusts, you see the kind of winds that we've done. Category 3, perhaps. Uh, at least Category 3. And hopefully it stays offshore, because if it doesn't, that's going to be bad. Uh, and just to just again show you talk about the uh, effects on the ocean. You can see here, what I'll be talking about here, is there'd be significant effects on the beaches for sure, even if the weather was good here. So, and the storm misses us. At this, at this close range, we're going to see effects for sure at the coast. So, Tropical Storm Erin is definitely going to be the one to watch. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk more about that on Sunday night. So, have a good night, and thanks for watching.